subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Shreya Savage. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 30th of November. No case of Omicron variant in India yet. Health Minister Mandavia tells Parliament. Scores of women protest to demand basic amenities. End to illegal fishing in Balochistan. And Nepal unveils first shock table facility built with Indian aid. And now for all the details. India's Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia told Parliament on Tuesday that there is not a single case of the new coronavirus variant Omicron in the country so far. Expressing confidence that India would be able to deal with this new variant, he said that Omicron has been reported from 14 countries and India is on the alert. India's Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia on Tuesday said that no case of new coronavirus variant Omicron has been detected in India so far. Answering a question on Omicron in the parliament, Mandavia said this new variant has been found in 14 countries. There is no case of Omicron in India yet. He added the government is taking all precautions and doing genome sequencing as well. The Omicron variant has been found in 14 countries in the world. And here, it's been found in India. In India, there is no case report in India. But in India, we have to see that the virus has been found in this virus. We have to see an advisory and we have to see it on the port. We have to see it on the port. If there is a case of a case, we have to check it on the port and we have to do genome sequences. Earlier this month, the World Health Organization named the new COVID-19 variant B11529, which has been detected in South Africa, as Omicron and alarmed the siren among countries of the new variant. Following this, Prime Minister Narendra Modi chaired a comprehensive meeting to review the public health preparedness and vaccination-related situation for COVID-19. Indian government has introduced stricter guidelines for people traveling from or transiting through at-risk countries. India's health ministry said states should ramp up COVID-19 testing as the world battles Omicron while some cities delayed the reopening of schools as a precautionary measure. The ministry also said the Omicron variant doesn't escape RT-PCR and rat testing, appeasing some concerns among domestic health workers that changes in the spike protein of the virus could lead to conventional tests failing to detect the variant. While India has not reported any Omicron cases yet, authorities are studying the sample of a man who tested positive for COVID-19 after recently returning from South Africa to see if he is infected with Omicron or another variant. The second day of the winter session of the Indian Parliament on Tuesday witnessed scenes of chaos as opposition leaders protested to seek the revocation of suspension of 12 lawmakers who were suspended for allegedly creating a ruckus during the monsoon session in August. The opposition staged a walkout after Vice President Venkaya Naidu refused to revoke the suspension. The second day of the winter session of the Indian Parliament continued to witness scenes of chaos on Tuesday in both the houses as the opposition led by the Congress party protested to demand the revocation of suspension of 12 lawmakers. The 12 lawmakers were suspended for the remainder of the winter session for their unruly and violent behaviour on the last day of the monsoon session on August 11. The opposition leaders on Tuesday claimed that suspending the lawmakers in this session is illegal and against the rules. They staged a walkout after India's vice president and chairman of parliament's upper house, Vankaya Naidu, refused to revoke the suspension, saying it was in order to protect democracy. <laughs> हम लोगों ने जो 12 सदस्यों को निलंबित किया गया 
उनको वापस लेने के लिए हम अध्यक्ष महोदय से मिले थे और उनसे रिक्वेस्ट किया गया जो घटना लास्ट सदन में लास्ट सेशन में हुआ था लास्ट सेशन में हुआ था फिर उसको उठाकर फिर से लोगों को मैं सदस्यों को सस्पेंड करना ये गैर कानून गैर कानूनी है The opposition party said they will stage a sit-in protest before the Gandhi statue in parliament on Wednesday over their demand. The winter session of the parliament commences on Monday and is scheduled to conclude on December 23rd. Moving on, hundreds of women in Gwadar district of Balochistan held a massive protest rally on Monday over an acute shortage of water and electricity in the region and called for an end to illegal fishing by trawlers. The protests were part of growing discontent over the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor project which locals say have been threatening their livelihoods. Scores of women from Balochistan's Gwadar district participated in a massive rally on Monday over acute shortage of water and electricity and raised concern over unnecessary security checkpost of Pakistani security forces and threats to livelihood from illegal fishing. Reports suggest the protests were part of growing discontent with China's presence in Gwadar, whose port is an integral part of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor project or CPEC. Maulana Hidayatul Rahman Baloch, a leader of opposition Jamaat-e-Islami party who is spearheading a protest movement, accused the Pakistan government of being hand in glove with the Chinese trawlers who are threatening people's livelihood by illegally fishing in the region. He said that the people of Gwadar have been deceived in the name of Sipik and Gwadar port while they have not benefited from it. Activists have long blamed CPEC has only brought death and destruction for the indigenous people instead of economic opportunities as Pakistani forces operate with impunity in the region to ensure safe passage to Beijing. The rise in unemployment and frequent price rise of essential commodities have continued to worry people across Pakistan who blame the government is not doing much to address the situation. Meanwhile, leader of opposition Shehbaz Sharif has said that as a result of the current conditions of the International Monetary Fund, there are serious fears that Pakistan's defence capability and future system of government will be paralysed. The rise in unemployment continues to be one of the biggest worries in Pakistan. Amid the rise in inflation due to worsening economic situation, Locals in Pakistan's financial capital Karachi have continued to express anguish over the lack of job opportunities in the country. Over the past weekend, Pakistan's opposition Jamaat-e-Islami party also intensified protests against the government over frequent price rise and unemployment amongst the youth. Several graduate students joined the protests to ridicule Prime Minister Imran Khan's claims of giving 10 million jobs to students. मैं मिडिल क्लास का आदमी हूँ लेकिन मैं रोज़ाना ये सोचता हूँ कि किस तरह अपना जो है ख़र्चा पूरा करूँ जब मैं नीचे अपने मैं अपार्टमेंट में रहता हूँ गुलिसान जौहर में जब मैं नीचे उतरता हूँ तो मज़दूरों को जो कि पहले मिलते नहीं थे मैं भीख मांगते हुए रोज़ाना देखता हूँ वो कहते हैं रोटी और सालन दिला दो ये सूरत हाल है Meanwhile, Shabash Sharif, the president of the PMLN party and leader of the opposition, said that as a result of the current conditions of the International Monetary Fund or IMF, there are serious fears that Pakistan's defence capability and future system of government will be paralysed. Commenting on reports that the government intends to release a mini budget in line with the IMF recommendations, Sharif said it will make Pakistan an economic slave of the global lending body. Any tax increase will further destroy businesses and the economy will continue to shrink causing millions to become unemployed he added In news from Bangladesh Bangladesh received around 2.7 billion US dollars investment proposals by foreign investors during the two day long investment summit in capital Dhaka that concluded on Monday More than 6000 participants of 54 countries attended the event organized by the Bangladesh Investment Development Authority. 
It also witnessed virtual participation by several world dignitaries. Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in an address said Dhaka is set to provide all policy support for creating investment-friendly environment. She said the government is building 100 economic zones in phases and has identified 11 potential investment sectors including infrastructure, capital markets, IT, jute textiles and blue economy. Nepal has unveiled the country's first shock table facility for testing seismic strength of buildings, which received built-in funding from the Government of India and the United Nations Development Programme. The facility is expected to be instrumental in identifying appropriate retrofitting technologies that will be needed to make Nepal's traditional houses safer and resilient. Bolstering its earthquake engineering, Nepal on Monday unveiled country's first shock table test facility with built-in funding support from the Government of India and UNDP, United Nations Development Programme. The facility was inaugurated on the premises of Tribhuvan University Institute of Engineering, IOE Pulchak campus. The facility aims to strengthen the capacity of the Institute for Research and Academic Works on safer construction and retrofitting techniques. The shock table testing facility is also expected to be instrumental in identifying appropriate retrofitting technologies that will be needed to make Nepal's traditional houses safer and resilient. <laughs> Study shows there are more than 2 million private houses at risk of collapse in case of earthquake and they could be made safer while keeping intact their ancient designs and architectures by using retrofitting technology. India's first secretary in Kathmandu, Karun Bansal, expressed hope that the facility, which is part of the larger post-earthquake support provided by India to Nepal, would help strengthen the capacity of the government of Nepal in building earthquake resilience. India committed 150 million US dollars as a post-earthquake assistance package on the housing sector to provide financial and technical support for the reconstruction of 50,000 beneficiaries, including 100 million US dollars grant and 50 million US dollars under its fourth line of credit. In a unique gesture, an Indian man has built a house for his wife in the style of the famous monument to love, the Taj Mahal. The house is open to visitors just like its more famous counterpart, but only during school hours. The Taj Mahal was commissioned in 1632 by Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in memory of his late wife, Mumtaz. Anand Prakash Choksi, a teacher in India's central state of Madhya Pradesh, has built a house for his wife in the style of the famous monument to love the Taj Mahal. Choksi built the house as a scaled-down replica of the world-famous building as a sign of his love for his spouse. Featuring four bedrooms, a library and a meditation room built at Choksi's wife's request, the White House also has a doomed roof and intricate carving and gold decorations inside. Sculptors were commissioned from the eastern state of West Bengal, while other artisans who worked on the house came from across India. The build cost approximately 260,000 US dollars. meditation meditation room dome size तो जो लोग ध्यान करते हैं, मेडिटेशन करते हैं, उनके लिए एक आइडियल प्लेस है, शांति से बैठने के लिए। The family visited the Taj Mahal in Agra and used images from the internet to obtain the exact measurements for the scaled-down romantic monument. Choksi's mini Taj Mahal is open to visitors, just like its more famous counterpart, but only during school hours. 
India's best known attraction the Taj Mahal was commissioned in 1632 by Mughal emperor Shah Jahan in memory of his late wife Mumtaz and is visited by nearly 7 million tourists a year according to official data Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening now viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at @sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.